In this video, we are going to talk about 10 consequences of developing the fearful avoidant attachment style. I am Pauline and I am so happy you are here because having the fearful avoidant attachment style is just confusing all over the place. And I so want you to understand yourself a little bit better so that you can be kinder to yourself and can be more loving towards yourself because you so, so deserve that. So in this video, we are going to dive into 10 consequences that you might recognize and that will help you put things together and put things in context and perspective. So let's dive in. The first one is because of the fearful avoidant attachment style, you internalize that things go really wrong when you are not being perfect, when you are not doing things perfectly. So a lot of fearful avoidance have this black and white thinking that if things are not perfect, if the relationship is not perfect, the boyfriend, girlfriend is not perfect, the feelings are not perfect, then things will go wrong really quickly or really badly. And it's it's this this huge feeling, this huge responsibility almost that things have to be perfect or everything will fall apart and everything will go wrong. And it's just not true. It's just not true. There can be so th so many things that actually go wrong. And in the end, it still will be all right. And that almost feels irresponsible to many fearful avoidance to say that it'll be all right. It'll all, it'll all be well in the end. A lot of fearful avoidance not having healed yet at all will scoff at that and think, well, that's, that's irresponsible. That, that's kind of dumb to just think that. You have to know how. You have to know how to do that. You have to be perfect. But you don't. You really don't. You just internalize that things go really wrong when you're not perfect because of what you've experienced in your youth. Okay, I need to not go into all of these points for like minutes because <laughs> then it will be a really long video. So the second, the second consequence is taking thoughts and feelings very seriously. This is a big difference. Um in the fearful avoidant attachment style and uh, the other attachment styles, um, that you take your feelings and thoughts very seriously. Did you know, did you know, for me, this was a big eye opener. Did you know that your thoughts don't have to be true? You have a lot of thoughts and you have had a lot of thoughts that are not true, that just are not true at all. And did you also know that when you are scared that something happens, it doesn't mean that it will happen. The fact that you are scared doesn't mean that it will happen. It is not some, um, how do you say it, predictive gift. <laughs> the fact that you are scared. You have been scared in the past of things that haven't happened. And it could very, very well be that you are scared of something right now that is just not going to happen no matter how scared you are, that it will. A lot of fearful avoidance take their thoughts and feelings very seriously. And it feels like a good thing, you know? It feels like a responsible thing to do, to take your thoughts and feelings very seriously. But when you look at mental health struggles, what you see is that uh, the more seriously people take their thoughts and feelings, the more they struggle with mental health issues, such as anxiety and depression and definitely also OCD. Um, whereas all people have weird thoughts, have thoughts they don't want. But people who don't struggle with mental health issues usually have the capacity to just say, that was a weird thought and just let it go. For a fearful avoidant, that can feel very irresponsible. Again, uh, you have to take that seriously because what if it is true? But the thing is, you have like thousands of thoughts every day and 99% of those are not even your own. They are not your thoughts. They are just things that people have said, things you have seen in movies, things you have read about in, in magazines or in books, things that friends have mentioned. They are not your thoughts. They are just echoes, echoes of the past. Uh, and mostly they are like old beliefs and old um, pains. You can change your thoughts. You can change the way you think. And 
you don't do that by taking your thoughts so seriously and trying to control them and trying to not have these thoughts, but you do want to have these thoughts. You do that by just accepting thoughts as what they are, nothing. They are just electrical currencies going through your head. And I used to like see them as clouds in the sky, just passing by, just passing by, fine, pass by. Oh, this is a dark cloud. <clears throat> fine, it will pass by too. Um, and that really helped me to not fight the, the thoughts and fight the feelings. You have to accept them. There's no other way. I wish there was, but there's no other way. So accepting the thoughts and accepting the feelings um, is the fastest way to actually choosing more good feeling thoughts. And you have that choice. You have that power. You decide what is going on in that pretty head of yours. You decide. You have so much more power than you think. But it is needed that you just accept the thoughts that are here now. And obviously, sometimes it's really hard to choose better feeling thoughts. Sometimes it, it feels or even is impossible. There might be underlying things that you need to address first uh, so that anxiety doesn't have such a big grip on you. But there will come a point in healing the fearful avoidant attachment style process where it will be possible to choose your thoughts and you can choose thoughts that feel good. And the thoughts that feel good, they align with your higher truth. They align with the truth of who you really are and they will lead you to a more loving life. So you don't need to take your feelings and thoughts so seriously and that's actually the responsible thing to do because otherwise you live a life in fear and choices made from fear are usually not the right choices. So that was the second. The third is you are judgmental and critical of thoughts and feelings. Uh, so that kind of ties into the last point. Um, you have learned to, to criticize some thoughts and some feelings and and want to have other thoughts and other feelings. So you judge all your thoughts. This is a bad thought, a negative thought. This will lead to bad things. This will lead to good things. All thoughts are just thoughts. In a way, there are no bad thoughts or good thoughts. And just seeing them as, as such, just allowing them to pass and not judging them and not being critical of them, not being scared of them, uh, really, really helps in allowing yourself to, uh, to choose those thoughts that just feel good to you. Because that's the only thing that matters. There are no bad thoughts. There are no good thoughts. And it's really hard to distinguish now what feels good or not. Because when you're in the midst of the, the crash state of the fearful avoidant attachment style, um, it can feel good to leave. It can feel good to think about leaving and, and breaking up, uh, even though that's not really what you want. So this is confusing, but I promise you, I promise you that in the process of healing this, it will get easier, it will get clearer, and you will be able to um, just accept your feelings and thoughts and realize that that's not scary at all. There's just, there's no thought or feeling I could have now that would scare me. And that is just such a far cry from 10, 12 years ago when I was in the depth of the fearful avoidant crash state where I was just fearful of every single thought that would maybe come into my head and the feeling that would give, that, that it would give me. So you can get there. You can 100% get there. And the freedom it gives and the stability that gives, oh, I so wish that for you. The fourth one, a cons consequence of the fearful avoidant attachment style is emotional outbursts. The fearful avoidant attachment style out of all the attachment styles has this, um, the most, the emotional outbursts. You get angry or you, you can get really sad um, and cry really hard. Uh, but mostly it's like anger or irritation where it comes out. Um, and that's just, it's a consequence of the fearful avoidant attachment style. I, I thought I was just a very, I think I would describe it as a temperamental person or like a passionate person, but I don't get angry now. <laughs> um, I guess I'm still passionate in a way, but anger doesn't have to be a part of that. 
uh, and it's much safer for my husband, for my daughter to not have these emotional outbursts anymore. So I'm, I'm so grateful that I got to heal that by healing the fearful avoidant attachment stuff. Then the fifth one is wanting to be saved. Wanting to be saved is such a, such a consequence of this attachment style. And it's, it's a gnarly one because victimhood feels good in a way. And it's, it's an easy choice also in a way. It's easy to want to be saved, to not really take responsibility for your own actions. Um, and I still have these little pockets in my life where I'm like, oh, I'm still not taking full responsibility there. I'm still almost wanting to be saved in a way. And every time I, I look at it and I do take that responsibility, my life gets so much better. I have so much more freedom. I feel so much more powerful. But feeling powerful for a fearful avoidant usually is associated with um, neg negative things, negative consequences. A lot of fearful avoidants are, are scared of feeling powerful, which keeps you powerless, which keeps you in victim mode, which keeps you in that wanting to be saved. I think there are more videos where I talk about this. I could record a whole video on the wanting to be saved thing. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below and I will put that on the list. The sixth one is not trusting yourself. That is definitely also a fearful avoidant attachment style consequence. You have a hard time trusting yourself. You doubt yourself. You doubt your feelings. You doubt a lot. Um, my phone is about to die. Let me let me put in the charger so that I can just keep talking until the video is done instead of when my battery is done. I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay, we're good. <laughs> All right. So not trusting yourself, doubting yourself, doubting your thoughts, your feelings, um, not being able to believe in yourself. Definitely a consequence of the fearful avoid and attachment style. Then the seventh one is needing attention and approval. Needing attention and approval. Uh, it can be almost a day job for some fearful avoidance. I know it was for me when I wasn't healing or wasn't healed at all. Oh, that was pretty much all I was doing um, because I was trying to heal a wound. I was trying to fill a big void. And I thought if I would just get enough attention and approval, obviously not a conscious thought, but that was like, a, I guess, an unconscious belief. If I would get enough approval and enough attention, then then I'll feel whole. Then I'll feel good enough. Then I'll feel safe. And that is not where... That answer lies. It is absolutely not. You, if you keep wanting approval and wanting attention and keep working for that, that's what you'll do for the rest of your life. And that's a really um, powerless situation to be in because you always need something from somebody else. Then the eighth one is rebelling against having to do things. So many fearful avoidance, and I actually love this, uh, hate having to do things. If somebody tells them to do something, they will probably not. <laughs> and that can actually be very triggering. So it can, it can trigger your crash state where you just kind of retreat and you just close off and you maybe physically feel so tired or so ill that you cannot physically do the thing that is asked of you. Um, but this is a consequence or can be a consequence of the fearful avoidant attachment style that you have to just such um, a resistance, such a rebellion against having to do things. And this is a wonderful thing because if you are drawn to entrepreneurship, which a lot of fearful avoidance are, uh, a lot of entrepreneurs have this, a lot of su successful entrepreneurs have this, that they, that they hate having to do things. And so they create their own life they create their own way and that is just magnificent i wish more people would do that because that means you get to be in alignment with yourself i mean entrepreneurship is hard i'm not gonna say it's easy but it's so freaking fulfilling <laughs> and it's um yeah it's amazing to not have to do things all right the ninth one is not being able to identify needs definitely what a lot of fearful avoidance struggle with. Um, 
you just haven't learned this. So it is a consequence of developing the fearful avoidant attachment style. You haven't learned how to identify your needs, which makes it really hard to express your needs if you don't even know what they are, right? Um, so yeah, this definitely also is a consequence. And then the last one is perfectionism. Also, absolutely something I think all fearful avoidance struggle with in one way or another. Some of them in every single area of their life and some just in relationships, just in work. Um, but perfectionism, having to be perfect, having to have perfect feelings, perfect thoughts, being perfectly happy all the time. Uh, yeah, definitely a consequence of the fearful avoidant attachment style. And why this is important, why it is important to know these 10 consequences is so that you know what can shift and what can heal when you start healing the fearful avoidant attachment style. I was and I still am just kind of amazed and surprised by what has changed in my life and in myself and in the way I feel and look at the world and, and think about myself and the, the things I see mirrored back to me by people around me by healing the fearful avoidant attachment style. It had so much more impact than I ever could have anticipated. And I hope by, um, with these videos, I, I can show you that healing the fearful avoidant attachment style is not, not necessarily easy, but it's so worth it. It is so worth it because it will knock over so many dominoes. That's what I just see. Uh, if you, if you get to that root and you really heal that, it can have an impact on so much in your life and it can free up so much um, and make you feel so happier, so much happier without having to work so hard for it. And I so wish that for you. Let me know in the comments whether you, whether you recognize any of these consequences. Maybe you know even more or if you've realized even more. If you want to get to that route and knock over all those dominoes. Uh, you can find more information on the online program in the description below. But let me know in the comments whether you recognize any of these. I would love, I would love to know. I am so happy you are here and I will see you in the next one.